This is a journey into sound. Greetings, Valparaiso. This is Ken the Metal Professor, and welcome to what I consider a big show tonight. In fact, probably one of the biggest. I'm nervous. I'm surrounded by people. I've played the introduction to Mostly Metal, so for all the regular listeners, you now know that it's the normal time for Mostly Metal to start here on WVLP. 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, also streaming on WVLP.org. But we're going to have a little switcheroo tonight, so you are listening to the right place. But normally, we have Mostly Metal at 8 o'clock, play some metal tunes for an hour, an hour and a half, and then talk a little bit of wrestling for the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program, starting around 9.15 or 9.30, depending on what's going on. But today's a big one, because it's the 50th anniversary episode of the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program. It's actually not true, but a couple of episodes have been lost, and so they don't really count anymore. So I'm calling it episode 50. And so I am surrounded in the studio by wrestling dignitaries uh, here to help. And we're going to talk a lot of wrestling, and we're going to start pretty much right away. So first thing I'm going to do is just check out that, uh, that everybody can hear everything. And so I've got a lot of thumbs up. Uh, let's just go around and everybody introduce yourselves really quick, and that way we'll be testing the microphones. This is Drax O'Dell. This is his much uh, more handsome partner, TK0. <laughs> Amy Renee. And on the phone, hopefully if this is working, we have Nick. Nick, are you there? Yes, I am. And can you hear everybody okay when we did a little round around? <laughs> You guys are a little bit muffled, but I can make you up just fine. Okay, that's good. And we can hear you, and I can adjust the microphone levels and see how this goes. So what I'm going to do here is just to make sure we're all set and ready to go, I'm going to play one short song just to not alienate the metal folks totally that have tuned in. Hopefully they'll stick around, and we'll, we'll play some, uh, some musical interludes every once in a while, about every 15, 20 minutes when we need a station ID break. We'll, we'll throw a song in there as well. Uh, so just while we get our, our feet ready to go, we are going to listen to some Ozzy. Uh, Drex's entrance music happens to be Ozzy. I don't have that particular recording with me, but we'll listen to uh, Shot in the Dark. So, Nick, uh, hang in there, and uh, we'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. If you, w- if you want to, if you get tired of sitting there on the phone, you can hang up and call right back in a couple more minutes, okay? So, Sounds good. All right, so here comes, here comes little Ozzy just to make sure things are going well. All right, there's there's Ozzy fading out. So for those of you that are normally here for Mostly Metal, that was it. Congratulations, the shortest episode of Mostly Metal ever. And now we're going to segue into the 50th episode of the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program. Your insubordination will not be tolerated. I'm surrounded virtually and physically by luminaries in the regional wrestling world. Drex O'Dell, TK Zero, Amy Renee, and on the phone, 
Nick Cutler. Um, Nick and TK and Drex are workers, performers, and Amy is somebody I would call a super fan. And so I asked her to come in and give her perspective on, on wrestling in general. And here's what we're going to do. I decided to, uh, well, we're not going to solve the world's problems, but I thought it would be interesting if nothing more than just a validation for myself that I'm not wasting my time, you know, spending all this time and money as a fan of wrestling is to talk about the fact that, you know, when you take pro wrestling and just describe what it is in a very short sentence or two, it sounds completely ridiculous, but so many people love it so much to either be part of it or to watch it. And we were just, I figured we'd just talk a little bit about why. Um, and from both perspectives, from the worker perspective and from the fan perspective. Now, I know that Nick is going to be uh, pulling out a little bit sooner than hopefully the folks in the studio since he is on the phone and we don't want his ear to fall off. So, Nick, um, if you're still there with us, can you just uh, can you tell everybody, since you haven't been on the air yet uh, on the show to talk to, to listeners here, uh, just what it is about wrestling that draws you back as a worker over and over again? What drew me into wrestling? What do I like about it as a worker? Is that what you said? Yes. So what is it that makes you come back? It encompasses everything that I like to do in life. So when I first started growing up, the first thing that I wanted to be was a pro wrestler. At nine years old, that was when I decided that I wanted to be a wrestler. And then at 15, 16, however old I was when I was a freshman in high school, I'm... Five foot seven, and I'm 135 pounds. So in my mind, I'm like, you know, maybe wrestling isn't all that realistic. So I decided that I want to be an actor. So I got involved in theater, and I got involved in stage, and I did like 18 weeks worth of acting classes. I had an agent in Chicago, and I did that for a few years. And then I learned how to diet, and learned how to supplement, and learned how to train, and completely changed my body. And it's just like, okay, maybe wrestling is a realistic thing for me to do, and it encompasses everything that I love. It encompasses the physical, it encompasses the theatrics. Wrestlers are actors, but we're physical actors, where we literally have to be the role that we're playing for the 8 to 10 minutes, 20 minutes, however long that we're in the ring. So you're able to manipulate and touch people's emotions and just take them away from whatever BS that they're having to deal with in the outside world. So when you're able to do that, it kind of gives you a special feeling too. That's great. We've, we've just been joined by Chet Urblansky, and I really like what you said there, Nick, because Nick Cutler is on the phone with oh, us, Chet. Um, I really like what you said because one of the things that I actually made a note of this on one of my pieces of scratch paper was that everybody that, that's talking to me today, uh, I consider to be not just you know an athlete and a wrestler, but also a terrific entertainer. And I think that's, that's one of the big components to what you do. Um, Amy, I know you've, been, you've watched... Uh, lots and lots of wrestling. So I see you at just about every show I go to. Um, how much of it, as you know, from the fan perspective, in terms of what draws you to it, how much of it is the is the entertainment aspect versus the kind of physical spectacle of it? Um, it's it's basically everything about it. Um, and what keeps keeps you going back is a lot of the if if you hit the good storylines, like it, it it is entertainment. And they keep you on the edge of your seat. That's the, that's a good show. And you, they prepare you already for the next show. And it's it's like watching a really good movie. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's the, definitely the entertainment and the physicality. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. So Nick, I'll come back to you, um, and then I'll go around everybody else and let them uh, answer this same question. But what is it like the first time you have? a conversation with somebody, say that you work with or a next door neighbor that you, you mention or they learn that you do this for a living and they latch on to the, you know, kind of, oh, that's, that's ridiculous kind of aspect of it. What, what's, the way, how, what's the way that conversation goes the first time where you try to pull somebody over to the fact that it actually is something that people really enjoy? The thing is, is that, and I don't know if it's necessarily because I strike a more um, intimidating uh, aura to people, 
but people have no one has ever responded with the oh you do that phony stuff or oh that's kind of ridiculous or oh you fake fight with guys no one has ever responded that way to me when I tell them that that's what I do I'll say I'm a professional wrestler and they'll say what do you mean by professional wrestling and I'll be like like the stuff you see on TV like WWE and they'll say oh really that's cool how did you get into that now, what is said once I walk away is a completely different story, but I've never uh, had somebody open the space in my face, oh, so you do like that phony stuff. It's never been said. Before. And I think it's kind of to that point nowadays where cause at one point there were enough people who were still trying to fight and stand up for the fact that it was quote-unquote real, and it was almost like a battle between people who were smarter than that and people who just wanted to stand by the fact that Pro wrestling wasn't paid, so to speak. Um, but now it's a common enough knowledge where everybody knows that it's entertainment. So when you tell somebody that you do it, they don't think in their mind, oh, so this guy's just a phony tough guy. They think in their mind, oh, this guy's an entertainer. So it's they look at it from that aspect. I don't think that anybody's looking at it really as phony anymore. Yeah, okay. Um since Chet just came in, I'll let him have, have first crack at the next round around the table. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody where it's come up that this is what you do and you've got to convince them that, no, it isn't ridiculous? It, it's, I think it's a lot what Nick said. Is it's, I think we're at a different place now where you don't have to convince anybody of anything anymore because I think we're kind of in a new age where a lot of things are accepted in terms of lifestyle, in terms of what people do, in terms of hobbies and pastimes and everything else. So now it's more about like they want to know specifics. Okay, well, what do you do? Like, who, you know, where are you at? What it, what happens? You know, those kind of things. Now, some people who were, like, fans years and years ago, they'll ask things more like, oh, did you ever meet so-and-so? Or how do they do this? Or, you know, they want to get into that conversation. But it's never really, I've never seen it, like, insulting. I think you see that more on social media or in things like that, where obviously, again, you're behind a keyboard or somewhere, so you people are always a little braver. <laughs> And it's and it's one of those deals where like you know I'm not a giant tall man or anything but I'm kind of wide, and people so I think it's a lot like Nick where they maybe they just second guess that part of it, but then yeah who knows what they say after you leave, but it doesn't feel to me anymore like there's this one group who stand there with their flag in the sand that's like well don't call it this and this other one that can't wait well that's a bunch of fake this and it it doesn't seem it doesn't feel like that anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because maybe things have kind of gotten to like this niche where it's like if you're even willing to have a discussion about it, you accept it enough that even if you're not going to buy a ticket or anything, you're not disrespectful of it, I guess is a good word. Have you ever had, TK, have you ever had a conversation with somebody? I'm so disappointed. I have so very little to add that uh, <laughs> no one else has already said. Uh, no, I think the only thing I have uh, could add to it is sometimes they'll go, oh, yeah, I'm in wrestling, is they'll think it's the amateur. So they'll think, oh, they're, you're an amateur, and they'll start going down about, you know, oh, this Olympian or you know, amateur <laughs> style. And I'll stare, and I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm the kind that like you can hit somebody with a chair with kind. And they're like, wait, really? And I'm like, yeah, that, that kind, that kind. And then... Uh, We'll have to have that discussion, but they'll, um, I mean, the only other thing is sometimes they'll kind of stop and they're like, they don't know if I'm being sarcastic with them. Because apparently I'm an incredibly sarcastic person. I never picked up on that. So I'll say it and they'll just kind of stare at me waiting for the joke. And I'm like, there's no joke. That is the God honest truth. But uh, other than that, I mean, everything these guys have been saying is honestly true. I don't think anybody has this weird, uh, you can't be a, a pro wrestler in life anymore. Mm-hmm. You got anything? I'm looking at Drex I talk, now. I talk He's, for Drex. He's here to hit people with big clotheslines. So in our matches, it's just me mouthing off, and then he does that. He's the, the silent and strong type. Uh, honestly, it's uh, it's not really been that bad for me myself. I I bought a house, for example, last uh, July. I moved in a townhouse, and my neighbors, they were worried that um, they were keeping me up one night because they had got a UFC pay-per-view, and everybody was going crazy watching. I think it was... Uh, Brock Lesnar versus uh, Hunt. Um, and so they were worried that they were keeping me up all hours of the night. And I'm like, uh, no, I was out of town uh, about an hour and 45 minutes south. I was wrestling. I didn't get home till 2 a.m. And she goes, wrestling? I said, yeah, professional wrestling. She's like, like, like the stuff on TV? And I was like, yeah, the stuff on TV. That's what I do on the weekends. 
Um, I apologize. I have friends over every so often. We watch a few pay-per-views or whatever. But um, the people at work at my shoot job, they're kind of like, hey, you know, what is this? Oh, yeah, you're a real big tough guy, you know, blah, 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 blah. The only person at that job that I actually was uh, – think that uh, would be interesting as far as uh, getting in a fight would be uh, a guy who's actually fought Muay Thai in, uh, in Thailand. Um, that's the only gentleman there that I've ever thought twice about. But now, for the most part, if anybody even goes, oh, you, you do that fake stuff, it's like, you watch TV, right? You watch Game of Thrones. Right. I mean, I like Game of Thrones. But I'm not going to believe that, you know, there's really dragons out there. Yeah, it's right. entertainment for a reason. Mm-hmm. People come back for a reason. Don't you bad mouth Jon Snow. No, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> Jon Snow, man, whatever. But I mean, we just we did a birthday party yesterday for fans of ours down at NGW. Some kids, uh, the grandmother and the mother asked us would we be willing to come down for a birthday party. The kids love us down where we wrestle at, you know. Uh, for them, it's still a big deal. It's something that they find for entertainment. And we have plenty of fans at other shows up here, down there, it doesn't matter. They are there to suspend disbelief for a week or two. If you can go to a soul-crushing job for minimum 40 hours a week and you can sit and go unleash a little bit, anyone who has ever put down that form of entertainment for somebody, whether it's music, movies, professional wrestling, you just, uh, you, I don't get it. I don't get that part of it. Like, it is how people release and mm-hmm. get their entertainment. They, they relax. They do whatever they need to do. I'm not going to spite somebody just because I don't like Maroon 5. That's their thing. You know, that's the type of music they like to listen to. I may not like, you know, Sex in the City or whatever mm-hmm. TV show some people watch. My thing is wrestling. That's what I do. And that's what I know our fans who come to see the shows. That's what they do. They want entertainment. That's what we do. Yeah. Nick, I'll come back to you again, sort of sort of follow up with this, that the, the committee agrees, I think, uh, that the whole business about, you know, oh, that's so fake, that that's, that's getting to be a thing of the past and a little bit cliche. And so I wonder, does that, does that actually make it a little bit tougher when you're talking to somebody? Say you're talking to somebody, say there's a listener right, you know, out there right now who tuned in here to listen to heavy metal and we're sitting here talking about wrestling. He's like, wrestling, okay, I know it's not fake, but why, why would I... Why would I try that out? What do you have kind of a go to aspect of of the performance that you use if you're trying to convince somebody that they should check it out? Check it out. Watch for this thing. You might like it. Do you have that? Not really. Um I feel like people that are gonna go and see wrestling gotta have some sort of reason to go and check it out. And it's, I feel like it's not going to be something where they're interested in seeing the rest. Like it's going to be, hey, I'm interested in seeing you because I like you. Or, hey, my kids watch this, so I'll go ahead and I'll take them to see it. Something like that. It's very, very difficult to just to describe going to a, a wrestling event without just like name drop and saying, oh, it's like, you know, WWE. But then... I don't like using that word when I'm trying to get people to go and see shows that I'm on because I feel like that's a huge misrepresentation to say it's like the stuff you see on WWE because an independent show is grossly different than what you see in WWE. So I feel like that's almost like false advertising. Um, Almost like I want to say it's just like watching a play. And Mm -hmm. it's difficult. Um... It's not something that is easy to, to do. Um, I feel like people need to have prior motivation. Like I said, it's oh hey, you know, a group of like a group of people at my office. Like hey, you know, you're wrestling close. We're all going to go and see you, just to go and see you. Um, okay, cool. But would they do it? Other than that, no, probably not. If they went and they were interested and they liked it, they may come back, which has happened before. Or hey, I. I I enjoyed myself, I'm going to bring my kids, and then their kids end up liking it, and so they keep bringing them back. It's something that keeps them hooked, and that's why um, I think the emotional attachment that professional wrestlers can have is so important, because you look at the athletic aspect and a lot of stuff that goes on today, and it's almost like watching the Harlem Globetrotters. Like, you can watch the Harlem Globetrotters, and it's very awe-inspiring, and you're fascinated with it, but it's not something that you would want to watch every single night of the year. Whereas, if you're following your your favorite basketball team, you're emotionally invested in that team. 
so you follow them. You're using terms like we won or we lost. People don't do that when they're watching the Harlem Globetrotters. Are the Harlem Globetrotters amazing athletes and good at what they do? Absolutely. But they don't have that emotional appeal, that emotional attachment. And so that's what I work hard to develop. I don't do a whole lot when I'm in the ring. But I have a capability of connecting with a crowd, be it in a good way or in a bad way, more so than a lot of people out. And so that is what I focus on because that in the long run is what brings people back. If that's the difference between somebody coming and paying $10 at one time and then somebody becoming a lifelong fan. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look over at Amy, who's, who's seen lots of your matches and, and plenty of matches of, of other people here and, and elsewhere. What, what, how does the conversation go when somebody that you know as a fan finds out that this is your passion, this is what you like to spend so much time looking at? It's really hard for me. <laughs> Number one, being a girl. Number one, it, it just, uh, it's, 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 and the WWE aspect, because that's automatically, like, oh, I follow the indie wrestling circuit, and they're like, and automatically that's what's going to click in their head. I'm like, oh, no, it is so, to me, it's not like that. It's so much more personal. It's so much more exciting. There's so much more passion. You are, there's so much more fan interaction. It's, it's, and as far as, I, I really wanted to say this, as far as the fake thing with the experience that I have from what I've seen, um, there is a limited amount of choreography. Uh, it, it's not fake. <laughs> you see the aftermath. Like, my friend's nose just got broken the other day. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not fake. I mean, the, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the passion, the... That's that's what brings me to the shows. I've been, I've been in Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois. Like I, I just I want to feel like I've experienced. I, I was just at two shows this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. You know, like I just that how this is how this is how you guys release. This is this is what I love to do on the weekends, and this is like I, like oh, and even when I did my show like oh i wonder Mm -hmm. i don't know where i'm gonna be this weekend but there's so many shows and so much going on all the time and so but yeah definitely definitely not Cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to Nick one more time because we are pushing towards 8:30, Nick, and I don't know if that's kind of your your time. Well, one second, one second before you ask me your question, I want to ask Amy a question from a fan standpoint. All right. What do you? appreciate more from a professional wrestler his athletic performance or an emotional connection um definitely the uh athleticism but i do think i really appreciate the crowd interaction with the wrestlers and how the wrestlers interact with the crowd because there are so many families i go with my daughter and how they interact with the people and stuff and that's how you keep them connected and that's how you keep them coming back and but definitely the matches as a whole too okay Okay, go ahead and ask me that question. Okay, that, that was a good one. You're, you're hired. You can be my correspondent sometime. Um, so in terms of, you know, all your life growing up, even before you actually got involved uh, yourself as, as one of the performers, did you ever go through a, uh, this is stupid phase where you just kind of jettisoned it out of your life for a while? Did I ever go through a phase where I thought wrestling was stupid? Yeah. Like you start as a fan Absolutely as a little not. kid? No. I have been in love with professional wrestling since the the first day that I watched it. I've gone through phases where I thought being a professional wrestler is stupid. <laughs> because it is stupid. Uh, we are very all very it, dumb. Um, <laughs> it can be very uh it's just emotionally draining, especially when because if if, if everybody's honest with themselves, not every Every, I'm sure every independent professional wrestler will say that their goal is to make it to WWE. But not every single one of them are going to take the necessary step to actually make that a reality. And when you actually take those steps to make that a reality and you actually get on WWE's radar and then you start what is pretty much referred to as a waiting game, it's a psycholo- it's psychological warfare on yourself. Because you're constantly wondering if and when a call is going to come. You're constantly wondering what it is that's holding you back. You're constantly wondering. You see other people getting opportunities, and you're thinking to yourself, why are they getting one and not me? And it can ruin you if you let it. And for a very, very long time, it did. I literally had to 
hire a mental health coach. And that, coupled with my daughter being born, kind of put everything into perspective for me. So it's it's almost like that girl that you try to date in high school, but she tells you that you're a nice guy. <laughs> and she's constantly going around to every single other guy in the school. And when those guys hurt her, she gives you just a little bit of attention, just enough to keep you hooked. And then as soon as something better comes along, he's gone. But she still pays you a little bit of attention. And you're still <laughs> hustling to try to get into that number one spot. But in reality, it's not going to happen. So that's how it feels a lot of the time. And so if you let it, that can drive you absolutely insane. And if you let it, that will absolutely destroy you mentally and physically. Um, but as a fan, even when I found myself in a position where I was frustrated with being a professional wrestler, I was still in love with the aspect of professional wrestling itself because I could still, especially with the advent of the network, which is the greatest thing in the history of mankind, <laughs> and being able to go back and watch the memories that I grew up on as a child and reminding me why I fell in love with this so much, I still get chills going back and watching that stuff. And it's absolutely ridiculous. I can watch, I can put a pay-per-view on, on a Sunday night that I've seen five times and order a pizza and I, it gives me a big spike feel even though I know exactly what's going to happen. And my wife just looks at me like I'm insane. <laughs> but that's, that, that's how much I love it. So... Yeah, so at some point we'll talk about this whole, you know, ordering a pizza thing with your fitness program. But <laughs> Drex was was nodding his head vigorously, and so what I'll I'll ask Drex if he had a follow up to that, and then we'll take a quick uh, station break, and then I'll I'll come back in and let let the other folks here kind of follow up on this question. And then Nick, if you're able to be with us past that, love to have you. But if you need to go, I definitely understand. Yeah, it's, I've got a crying baby out there right now, and I'm not going to make my wife pay for me any longer. But I really, really enjoy talking with you guys. It's very good getting Amy's perspective on things because it's not every day you can actually talk with a fan and thank get what's know. going on behind their mind. So thank you for sharing that. Thanks, thank thanks. you guys for having me. Sorry I couldn't stay on longer, but really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for taking some time, and uh, we'll, we'll do this longer. We'll have a Nick Cutler exclusive someday. How about that? Thanks, guys. Okay, have a Thanks, good night. Nick. And now, okay. Drex, I'll, I'll take it over to you. <clears throat> Just to kind of piggyback off of what uh, Nick was talking about, no, uh, as far as finding wrestling stupid ever, no, I've gone through droughts where I didn't watch anything ever. Um, I'll be completely honest. I watched constantly taping on one VCR. I know for any young listeners out there, I doubt there's any. Uh, oh, I see. Taping, <laughs> taping, up in the, the taping up in my bedroom, uh, you know, Monday Night Raw while watching WCW live, um, switching back and forth during commercials, making sure I wasn't missing anything. Um, after after high school, I just kind of really didn't watch it for a long time. It wasn't until, uh, believe it or not, I did not watch much wrestling on pay-per-views until Brock Lesnar busted open John Cena's head um, on SummerSlam one year. I think I was at a Hooters restaurant for that. And then the next time I actually watched a wrestling show, uh, a few years back, like six years ago, I went to Vegas and watched Monday Night Raw, uh, episode 999. Mm. And um, that was when Heath Slater was uh, getting his butt kicked by all the old legends, and Rikishi came back on that show. And his, his sons, the Usos, were out there dancing with him for it. But uh, from that point on, I've been back watching it almost every single week when I can. I don't always have time to watch it on Mondays and Tuesdays, but... Um, but like Nick said, yeah, sometimes the wrestling stuff to get burnt out. Sometimes I don't travel anywhere near as much as Nick Cutler does um, or as much as some of the other folks in the area do. But you get kind of burned out. You get emotionally invested. I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes in a few of the places that I work. And um, the network is, is a godsend because I can go back and watch my favorite match of all time and just listen to the WrestleMania 7 crowd going absolutely insane for the most simplistic match that's ever been put on by WWE, and it is the infamous blindfold match between Jake the Snake Roberts and Rick Martel. And just watching the, the promos leading up to it, this, this is the only thing that actually bothers me about the network. I wish they would do it. You pick a feud, and you can watch mm -hmm. every single match and promo 
leading up to every single bit until you get to that payoff match. And WrestleMania 7, the payoff mm-hmm. match, like for a quick short rundown, Ric Flair's, uh, I'm sorry, why did I say Ric Flair? Ric Martel, they're both arrogant. Used his uh, <laughs> used his perfume. I believe it was called Arrogance, wasn't it? Yes, it looked like it yes. was an old fashioned uh, lung sprayer with the with yep. the the the, 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 the can on yeah. it. Yeah, something like uh, narrator. Yeah, the narrator. Yeah. yeah, you know, we'd see it on the old uh, Looney Tunes cartoons, and you know, spraying bug spray. And he sprayed <laughs> Jake the Snake in the face, and he was blinded by it. But he came out and he went to attack him on Brother Love. He ended up DDTing Brother Love on the stage, leading into this whole thing. But listening to the entire crowd, just like as Jake is pointing around the ring, looking, and they're saying, no, no, you know, and the minute his finger points right at Rick Martel, the crowd lights up and goes insane. And just listening to that many people screaming and cheering and pointing, that's what makes me love professional wrestling. And it's like, I don't care if you think the matches are predetermined, that's fine. That reaction that the people have in that crowd, Mm -hmm. the guys in the ring, they know it's real. At that moment, it doesn't matter what is supposed to happen, what has led up to it. That moment is what it is all about. And when things are booked properly, and I'm not saying anywhere around here, I'm not saying TV because far be it from me, I'm not the one making millions and millions of dollars every year doing it. I'm not even making this as a as a living. This is my <laughs> this is my fun hobby, yeah. second job, hopeful future career. But that is what it is. It's that's what it's all about. It is literally about getting everybody into it. Even if it's for just a ten minute match. That's all that matters. There was one body slam and one DDT in that entire match. That was all it was. <laughs> and it was the most amazing match I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, you know, maybe not the most amazing, but my favorite match of all time. I'll have to go back and watch that one now. Absolutely. That entire pay per view, WrestleMania seven is a great I mean, is that's that's, that's much of Canada, that's the Canada one, right? Uh, Toronto? Yeah, I believe it's Toronto. I think I might be wrong on that. But yeah, it's like the entire pay per view. Just watched it again the entire thing the other day. It's it's, a, it's great. Talk okay. I have a question. Yes. Uh, what are you guys' like WWE your favorite feuds ever? Since Austin we have Rock. the network, <sighs> your favorite feuds ever. Um, I, Austin and Shawn Michaels. Uh, when Austin from the start, I recently last last fall, I've watched everything from King of Ring '96 all the way through every Monday Night Raw, every pay per view in order until. Austin won at WrestleMania to get Shawn Michaels. Steve Austin was a part of that, en- entire, <laughs> that entire story is amazing. The entire okay. thing. This, the, the, every, and then everything else after that, obviously. But Austin Rock is great. Austin Rock's the best. Uh, Austin's the whole reason I got into wrestling. So. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's quite a presence. I'm older. Like I like uh, My favorite is Roddy Piper and Jimmy Superfly. Mm-hmm. And all the Piper's pit and all the, the chaos and destruction. And like that will always be my favorite. I was scared at the Undertaker when I was a kid. <laughs> See, and, I know I, so I'm older, but yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, so I'm older, so like, and there wasn't a, like, I was into way more like NWA stuff before that, yeah. like at that time. So like, Dusty and the Horsemen, that's my thing, all day. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. Like it was growing up in a house where like single mom house and is that like Dusty was like your dad. Because like, you know, like, he was just like that guy. Like he also may have been your father. But yeah, you know, right? 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 And it's just it's possible. But you know, it's, I mean, just because where I grew up in the neighborhood I grew up in, everything else, it was like, like, dude, that could be a dude here. Like yeah. it was so relatable. Mm-hmm. And then like I just specifically, as a kid, remember crying like a demon because they tied him to a truck and they broke his arm. Oh yeah, and I'm mm-hmm. freaking out. I'm like, Mom, we gotta call the police. Maybe something <laughs> just happened. I don't even know what to do about this, and I'm just bawling miserably. And they're trying to talk me down, and they're like, and it was funny because like I had some half sisters who were just like, oh, I'll fake this number. I was like, first of all, don't ever tell them that. And secondly, she's trying to bring me down the other way. She's like, he's gonna be okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I think that. But as WWF goes and all that, mm, that's a tough one because there's a lot. Mm-hmm. See, unfortunately, we didn't get a lot of the WCW and the Southern stuff See. when I was at. And when I grew up, I was watching, I'm not kidding, Steamboat and, and Macho on my grandfather's knee as a child. Watch, I remember if wow, I, yeah, if I, had I remember the, same the one, debut I think of The Undertaker. The and that was not kidding. I was scared on my mind. When, when Hulk Hogan's chest was broken by Earthquake landing on his chest, I literally wrote a letter to Hulk Hogan. That's how, <laughs> that's how scared I was for him. You know? I was like... I don't know, five, six years old or something, you know. Yeah, I think the steamboat, the, the like the steamboat savage stuff. Though. Yeah. Oh yeah. When he crushed his throat and all that deal, and he's like writing on chalkboards and, yeah. like, dude, he almost killed him. <laughs> so did he, did each of you have like a family member then that was sort of 
maybe your your anchor or did, that that helped you get into this? Because my dad would take me to to wrestling shows at the Cincinnati Gardens, and so he was kind of my, you know, my he wasn't he wasn't my wrestling mentor, but he he was what allowed me to see that it was okay to like this stuff and he would take me and you were talking about remembering that long ago yep. um <laughs> sitting on sitting on a knee you're you, tk you didn't have anybody it was actually i remember so i thought wrestling was dumb as a kid and would tell my friends it was dumb and then one time <laughs> my friend my friend joe he's 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 had my friend adam and i we were the neighborhood kids he's like hey come watch this pay-per-view called SummerSlam, blah 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 and that was the match austin broke his neck Ooh. And I remember Austin coming out, and I'm like, I, do, I didn't understand bad guy, good guy. I mm-hmm. didn't get it. And I remember seeing him come out, and I'm like, I really like this guy. Like, he just instantly snapped me, like, this is my wrestler. Takes one move, and he's down. And I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> You're a jinx. <laughs> yeah. I, someone oh. tells Stone Cold I ruined his career. So he pins him. I just remember, I was like, I remember the main event was Shawn Michaels versus... Um, no, Shawn Michaels might have been a ref. It was three people. It was Taker, Bret, Ma- uh, Bret Hart, and Shawn Michaels. Like Bret Michaels. Bret Michaels. <laughs> uh, they, they fused. Finally, they fused. I forget, who was, I forget who was the ref, but like it was, it was the feud was going on between Bret and Shawn, and somehow one of them screwed the other while they um, were the ref. If I remember correctly, uh, Bret, I'm sorry, Shawn, not Bret Michaels, right. was the referee in that match. And it somehow yeah. it got all screwy on this, but I, I remember seeing that match and going, I don't understand what happened in this match. Well, I don't get... I didn't get that part, but I remember seeing just like the basic match, and I was like, "That made sense to me." And it clicked, and I remember I'm like, "I want to be, I want to watch wrestling." And my mom's like, "No." And so what I did was watch it anyways. <laughs> there you go. Until she stopped uh, putting up a fight. Uh, yeah. We're gonna sidetrack for just a second. I do believe you are in fact a bad luck charm for the first time you've watched a certain place, because not only did Austin break his neck. But, first, uh, independent first, first independent show, show I go. Show TK I was to. there for 30 seconds. Holy crap, you were there for that? <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I walk, I walk in, because I was training, that was the year I was training, and so they go, hey, there's this promotion running in Valpo, and I'm yep. like, hey, I Moose should go. Lodge. <laughs> so I walk into the Moose Lodge, I'm there for the pre-show, there's a match going on, I sit down at the bar, I'm looking, and I see somebody leap off the second rope, and then I watched their leg go the wrong way, oh, no. and I instantly went, that snapped. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, that's what happened. Oh. <laughs> that I, feel was... like leap, I feel like leap is a really, really nice word for what I do. Was, I like uh, he... to call it falling gracefully. <laughs> oh, there was gracefully nothing graceful. There was yeah. very, very no, much yeah, nothing graceful. For I, was, no. I remember seeing it, I'm like, oh, that leg's in a wrong spot, and I'm like, He's not uh, screaming though. And the, then, other, the other side <laughs> note to that is that was my first show for PWK as well. So thanks, and, thanks, and, then, and, then, thanks, and then to top that off, off uh, Macho Del Silva's mask got pulled off in the middle of my match by uh, Preston Churchill on accident. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! I, might I I've seen the video that one time. Yeah, the, I what? watched it once just to make myself. And it's really neat when you listen to the crowd because there was, I mean, it wasn't it was a decent crowd for that place. That yeah, wasn't so bad. They kind of like they. Some people you can kind of see that the leg was kind of funky. When I put my leg in the air so I could look at it myself, Don't. you heard the entire crowd go. Oh, Ugh. it was not quite as bad as Sid Vicious, <laughs> yeah. but it was almost. They, yeah. I guess the, they said a lady like got up and went and threw up in the bathroom in the whole time. <laughs> <night. Hey, laughs> you know, I ordered another beer. <laughs> right? Did you just rub some dirt on it and I, continue, I tried or to order another beer myself? <laughs> no. Well, what, well, do the really quick version. The referee in the match is what was our promoter's son, who just learned to referee like three days prior. Oh, yeah. The reason I tell this is because he's in, he, we're, we're in a, our training facility that we had at Lakeville, and he's going through stuff, and he looks just scared, long haired cat in a room full of rocket chairs, scared. And I pulled him to the side and I go, Listen to me. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> <laughs> so. Don't ever say that. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I've <laughs> learned that. And then he watched me walk yeah, in. And went, yeah. Oh, no. And I, so I destroy my ankle. And so then the person whom I was in the ring with, she's attempting to try to, like, roll me up and do other. I'm like, please don't touch me right now. <laughs> and then the poor kid's just looking at me like, what should I do? <laughs> she so, got very mad yeah, with him. Yeah, I know. And in, like, the calmest I could be, because, again, I don't know why I was as calm as I was, but I grabbed it by his shirt. And I was like, I need you to tell some people they're going to have to come out here because I'm probably not going to be able to walk back. 
So here come a couple guys. They got me, you know, and then... And that, that crowd, though, was one of my favorite crowds ever. Because as they wheel me out in this gurney... <laughs> <laughs> right by me. Yeah, right by they're, me. <laughs> they're clapping. Uh-huh. I'm like, you guys are so sweet. And I had to stop and go, you guys know that I was the heel in that match, right? And then just like that, they go, boo. And I'm like, you guys are cool. Thanks. We're glad you got yeah. that. Right, right. <laughs> so I threw stuff at him. Yeah. Right? And it was Doing just, your job. Yeah. Hey, something. No. Yeah. A couple of times now, you know, the the role of the crowd has been mentioned, and I actually made a note about that to, to bring it up again. So in terms of the, you know, the way that the way that the ways people enjoy this manifest itself, one of the things that seems to be getting bigger and bigger, at least when you watch WWE, is the crowd itself becomes a character. And there's the there are these organic uh, chants and free and the crowd as a whole knows what to do. It's amazing that that eight to ten thousand people, or whatever the the number is, with the seats blocked off and everything, can within twenty seconds agree <laughs> on what's the best chant to break into or what's the best reaction to this. So, what um, what is like you were talking about that being one of your favorite crowd moments? Are there are there other crowd moments that you guys remember, either that you that you you were able to elicit or that you just watched somebody else do? And then Amy, I'll come around to you and ask if you oh, have yeah. any. Um, memories like that yeah uh so uh tk and i sell uh, myself uh when we started tagging up down at ngw you know they it's it's a little bit smaller crowd than you know a lot of people would uh hope for but we've been we've been building we've Mm -hmm. been getting better and and drawing more every show um regular wvlp listeners should know all about ngw at this point yeah yes absolutely (laughs) you've been down for a few shows now you coming down saturday i don't think i can Uh, i know but uh (laughs) <laughs> when TK and I were going on a run before we won the uh, NGW Tag Team Championships the first time, uh, last year's anniversary show um, in Crawfordsville as well, but not at the Armory. We did at uh, Athena, uh, Center. Athena Center. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we had a match against uh, Arun and Kenneth James. And at the time, Kenneth James was trying to teach Arun how to be more vicious, um, a little bit meaner, because he's mostly smiles. He's a nice... He's, he's very quiet. Yeah, he's very quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, we got in there and uh, circled around real quick, and I believe we pinned Arun within two minutes. And Kenneth James is like, no, 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 hold on, gentlemen. You said you can win 100 out of 100. These people don't have enough time for that. Let's let's do this do it one more time. So we said, all right, fine. Ch- the crowd starts chanting two, 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 and we're like, all right, fine. You know, we circle around, and Kenneth, is me and him are about to lock up, he tags Arun in again. And just throws him to the wolves because that's the kind of guy Kenneth James was at that time before he learned his lessons. Um, he went in, I threw him down, the big spine buster, pinned him again. So we won two matches within three minutes. And as we're standing there, Kenneth James starts getting in and he's just berating Arun, yelling at him with his back to us. And we start looking around at the crowd and we do this. We put up two fingers. And they start chanting two, and then we just put up the third, and they just started going three, 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 three. And we looked at the ref, and he rang the bell. As soon as the bell rang, KJ turned around, and he got the muscle symphony, the finisher, and just bam, he got pinned for the third fall. Crowd went nuts. It was probably my personal favorite moment of being in the ring. Um, but, you know, the Hebert Havoc show is amazing. Mm-hmm. The, 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 they're just loud. They don't chant, chant, or anything. Listening to all the ARW fans chant Harry it in and Nick Cutler is actually <laughs> a funny thing to hear. I like you said I like it. Nick. He's, he's a good Brandon. wrestler. But That's my friend Brandon. He wasn't really. the only one. It was just like nonstop. Oh, it's, it's, we when went, him and Greg Glover wrestled we a couple months ago. We went to CSW ago. last yeah. night and they were doing it there. I was there like, oh go. my god. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, it gets uh, him going. It gets. Oh my gosh. Just yeah. being at just being at some of the live shows. Like if it, it, I, I actually would like to equate. Um, professional wrestling whether it's WWE or you know if if you're lucky enough to secure a ticket to New Japan if mm. they're in the states listening to the crowd at those types of shows even AAW in Chicago it's 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 like watching NHL hockey for the first time most people are like hockey's boring blah 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 you go watch live hockey you will change your tune yes. immediately and you may even find yourself watching a random team like the Vegas Golden Knights just Secured their yep. spot in the Stanley mm-hmm. Cup Finals in their inaugural year, like there's magic there in in the fans and the crowd wrestling. There's magic with that. As far as the chants go, I mean, 
I just I've I've seen I don't know how many people come through the doors over at AAW that I've. I, John Morrison has got to be one. Well, uh, whatever name he's going by now is Johnny Impact, the Johnny something, Johnny Black Johnny, 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 Johnny Blackheart, or whatever he's, he's in, doing. He's going to be in Blackcraft now. My yeah. son and I are stoked for that. But it's I'm like so excited that. that that guy, those guys are professionals at the of the utmost tier without being on WWE. I mean, he was there before, but it's it's going to sound really insulting, but a great worker will quote unquote train the crowd how to react to certain things and it's not that we think we can manipulate them we want to get them to a certain point and that's part of the story you tell in a ring um, and whether it's a match whether it's the promos whether it's the whole show as, as a whole sometimes the WWE crowd is filled with people who feel like beach balls are more entertaining than watching Cesaro light people up across mm-hmm. the ring I love watching that guy wrestle I love watching what he does in the ring because he's so fluid He's good, he's strong, he's fast, he's talented, the athleticism's there. Personality may not be what you're used to seeing on the indies, like Amy was saying earlier, it's much more a personable thing on the yeah. indie scene. There's way more crowd interaction. That's part of the reason why I watch, like watching Kevin Owens. He still treats the crowd like he's in a poker hall mm-hmm. up in Canada somewhere. Like, he still yells at the crowd. At the live events, are no different than TV. And... That's what I like about some of those guys. They still bring that to the table. And thankfully, the WWE machine, and it's amazing, doesn't limit some of those folks from doing what they're great at. And that's part of the reason why I love doing the indies and stuff and some of the smaller shows and going to them myself as a fan. It's Mm -hmm. fantastic. TK, you seem to have a really good connection with the crowd via the kids. (laughs) And we've talked about that before. It depends uh Depends where we're at. Where we at? We, yeah. we, uh, we uh, north of Rensselaer or we south of yeah, Rensselaer? How, how north are we and how south are we? Because they have different reactions. Uh, but they are so, But they should, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, so my my favorite interactions has always been with uh, the kids just uh, down south in NGW. There's uh, these the two girls that always show up with their, I believe, their grandfather. Always give me a hug before they leave. They're always super kind, always... No, super nice. Uh, Daniel, the kids, yep. uh, the, the birthday party, you know, like uh, his family started coming and him always coming out to find us and, and mm-hmm. his um, family coming to talk to us. Like that's, That is very special to me that I mean something to somebody that's, you know, I'm, I've randomly stumbled into the life, right? I also appreciate up here in a sense that like I can get kids to want to, you know, burn a house if I'm in it. Like, they are that mad that they will come after, you know, they, they, they will come after me or I can scare them that much, you know, like, I can, I can just flex at them. I can come at them really quick and they will get scared. Like, it's, it's fun to know, like, mm-hmm. I have that much over them. So, you know, those stupid kids Friday night. <laughs> they called you old, I think. Yeah. Called me old. And he which, took offense to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I turned him finally. I told you those kids are dumb time. up here. I've been telling you, Demont kids, dumb, okay? <laughs> But there's something special enough where I've gotten a kid so mad at me, she spat at me. You know, oh. when you get a kid so mad, she will spit. <laughs> you know, like you have done, you have hit a chord that you don't, you don't usually hit with a kid. You know, oh, like it's hot that in is, there, brother. It's, it's, hot it's, there. it's <laughs> someone, yeah, someone is like wishing death upon me. Like if I've I would, had pop cans thrown at me, I've been kicked in the yep, ankle through yep, guardrails. Yep. <laughs> That's why I don't go circle around the ring very much anymore. I'm like, no. Well, you should be like me. And, and that's just throw, the women. Uh, yeah, that's just the women. <laughs> throw so Billy right. so hard into the into the uh, guardrails, he crashes into fans. That was uh, unexpected. And I totally may have gotten slightly chastised about that. But uh, nah. he, sh- he should have uh, let me throw him so hard. That's really on him. So <laughs> Get bigger. So do you... Have you? What's your favorite crowd reaction that doesn't involve a broken limb? Oh gosh. Well, I, I think one, the one thing I think, and Drex made a really good point. It's, it's again, it always sounds bad. It sounds like when you say train, it sounds condescending, and it shouldn't, because it's just more like if people know what you're about, you don't have to spend so much time teaching them that part, and they can just be into it with you. And like I think it gets a lot more organic that way. And now they can sit and just watch. And what happens in those cases, like. A lot of pro wrestling king shows and that, um, especially in the summer, like the festivals and that. I think my favorite crowd interaction, I wasn't even involved. 
I watched um, the Spirit of Detroit wrestle in Knox, and the crowd. I was I helped kind of put some things together, and I kind of helped book some of those matches, and in no way in my head, just knowing the Knox crowd and how the Knox Festival crowd is, they're not the most nicest way I can put this. Um, <laughs> they're outside the listening radius right okay. now, unless they're streaming, so it's okay. Open to other cultures. We'll go that route. There you go. Well, so Spirit of Detroit come out there, and I'm like, "There's this. They're gonna eat up alive." Like, and we're trying, and I need them to be babies for this to work. They gotta be good guys for this to work. They're gonna get eaten alive. This isn't gonna work. They walked out, and this crowd blew up. They're on their feet. They're cheering. They're freaking out, and everything they did in the match mattered, except for one guy. In a crowd of probably 400 people. Took his shirt off. Giant swastika tattoo oh on his chest. <laughs> you, meet, you meet all kinds of people yeah. in this. Mama's don't you? pride and joy. <laughs> oh my god. But it was but it was really neat to see that guy try to be that way. And that entire crowd of people who I would have never thought would have been that good of people shout him down themselves. They handled it. And I'm sure the spirit yeah. of Detroit's opponents didn't even want to associate with that. No, one they yeah, like they were that. like, yeah, we can't even be with that. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it, it was, but it got to be this thing where everybody in the match kind of got okay. That guys were not, but then the crowd was all. So you had like, and then you had three or four of his buddies telling him to shut up, and then everybody else looked around going, you know, and it was just neat to see everybody kind of get on the same page. Yeah, just in a situation where they didn't have to. There wasn't there wasn't any gain for them other than hey, we like these guys, leave them alone. You know, and mm-hmm. it was just neat to see wrestling be able to do that. How often is that ever going to happen where somebody's just, I guess, hate just gets shouted down by a big group of people whom you wouldn't think would do it? Yeah. And that's that's cool to me. I'm like, that's something. But as crowds go, best crowd interaction I've ever seen was at a Chikara show. Mm-hmm. The um, uh, 2.0 was, it was, they were still 2.0 at the time. And uh, Scott Parker got the whole crowd to chant, we'll chant anything. <laughs> because cause they would do things and like when his partner would be getting beat up he'd start chanting defense see defense so the crowd would do that and finally at one point he's like I think you guys will chant anything <laughs> yeah and they turned right to that and I'm like that's perfect that is. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Is it, it, it the response time that people synchronize with and, and do something like that is always amazing I mean, you just, like, again, talking about Kevin Owens again, yeah. I think a couple of years ago he was wrestling Sami Zayn on a uh, house show. And as he's walking out, he's talking directly to somebody's cell phone camera. Yeah. He's walking on a ramp. Watch these idiots. I'm going to get them all to chant USA. And there's two <laughs> Canadians in the ring. <laughs> and as he's wrestling with them and he's got them in the corner and they start chanting USA and he's got them in a headlock and he's like, see, I told you they do it. I told you they do it. <laughs> it's like that's the kind of, like, just... Uh, to be able to get people into that that point, it's like, yeah, it's kind of like I got one up on you, but hey, that's what we want anyway. We want that whether you go in us, cheer yeah. us, whatever. Now, you, Amy, you've probably seen – I'll let you chime in on the, the whole crowd thing, and then we'll take a station break. But you're in the front row a lot. Mm-hmm. So what, what's – are there any particular being in a crowd best moments that you well, can think of? Like from my point of view, being included is fun. You know, and to, to do the chants and stuff like that, it's fun. Uh, one of my favorite things, uh, <laughs> Machine, we were at a GPW show, and all these kids are like, you suck, you suck. And Machine goes by this little boy and goes, shut up. He goes, but I want you to win. I was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, no. And I just stood there like, and that just happened. I was like, as he just kind of walked away, and he's probably like, oh, my God, you know. But um, it's another thing I did experience. Uh, we went to SmackDown around my birthday. Mm-hmm. And I have even heard from Edge that Chicago, hands down, has, like, the best fans. Yep. And that show was so good. And Rusev, when Rusev Day, every day is Rusev Day, but mm-hmm. when it first started, the way to sit and experience, I, I just sat there and I listened to everybody. And to see his face... He's in the grand scheme of things. And, I mean, that crowd popped so hard. And I, he was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> to, to sit and experience that when all that first happened, as a fan, it is the, it's so cool. And I am 95% of the time that 
one obnoxious one that's rooting for the heels, <laughs> Drax all the time, and you know everybody's like, "What is her problem?" I'm like, "I," because I know them from other places. And mm-hmm. Another You're the one, one of that my makes favorites. It really hard on us. We're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, another You're one not of my helping favorites. Us. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, Beast showed up at GPW and his music started like he's so huge and I'm screaming and everybody's like, oh my god, what is wrong with her? And yeah, as a fan, it's it's just it's awesome. Okay, it is. Well, I'm going to take a quick station break here, let people stretch their legs, let their ears breathe. When we come back, a couple more questions. Uh, we'll talk about some of the events coming up. Uh, Amy, your event that you're, you're coordinating and then stuff that you guys have. I got a little game to play if you, if you guys are interested. In, uh, oh, so just a little three Not or four tracks. minute break. No, Drax yeah. isn't allowed to play. Only TK. <laughs> TK gets all the mic time. So I have a, I have a song dedicated to Amy here. Uh, turns out Amy is a Testament fan, and so I brought in Souls of Black, and I asked her what's her favorite song, and, and uh, it's, it's Souls of Black. So we'll listen to it. It only takes a little over three minutes. As a reminder, you're listening to WVLP at 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana, also streaming on WVLP.org, and we will be back here on the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program in just about three and a half minutes. And uh, for the echo, echo, echo. For those of you surprised to hear heavy metal now, after almost an hour of talking, that was just sort of an interlude, so everybody in the studio could uh, stretch their legs and get some circulation back in their ears from wearing headphones for so long. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around. For those people wondering what the heck's going on, this is the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program, episode 50. Maybe not really, but 50-ish. I'm calling it episode 50. If you look at the archives on YouTube, this will this will come up as episode number 50 because there's been a couple that have uh, either not been recorded or just didn't work out in terms of the replay. So I have in the studio here Drex Odell, TK0, and I forgot I was supposed to introduce you as, as Diesel. <laughs> so uh, Chet, Chet Blansky and uh, Amy Renee, free workers and super fan along with me. And what we've been doing is just sort of getting into the question of why the heck people love to participate and watch this thing that seems to be completely ridiculous when you just take a look at it on the surface. Um, and I think what I, what I wanted to do is you were telling a story, uh, Chet, while we were in the break there uh, about, I guess what I'm, I'm going to call it a wrestling high, you know, like you're about runners high and stuff like that, that you just, you know, you had an experience pretty recently that something went so spectacularly well that you were kind of jazzed about it uh, for, for quite a long time after. And, and can you talk a little bit about that? And then uh, we'll just, you know, kind of talk about how important those, those kind of moments are to keep you going. Yeah. I wonder for like people who are like really good, like wrestlers, like, like these two over here, this tag team guys over here that are really good. Yeah, they're right. they, they have lots of good matches coming a lot of times, so maybe, I don't know if it feels the same for them, but match quality-wise over the last year, it's been a little rough for me. <laughs> like, so last night we had one that went really well. Like, things clicked the way they were supposed to. The crowd cared, and everything, like, it was that perfect storm of, like, good stuff. And it was what you hear guys talk about all the time. And then to actually have it, and then when you get it verified by people in the crowd, when people in the crowd pull you to the side and go, that might have been our favorite match of the night. We dug that. And then they were like, and instead of just kind of blowing smoke at you, they're telling you specifically why. Like, well, I really liked this, so it happened. Or I like when you said this. Or you're, you kind of start going, okay. And you just, you feel really good. But it's this, for me, it's, it's a thing where it's, I like, I like people to feel like they got their money's worth. And I never want anybody to like, see anything I'm involved in and go, well, I could have skipped that. <laughs> like, I don't really care what happened there. So I, myself, I try to work really hard to make sure that if I don't have every single person paying attention to me, cause I'm an attention freak. Um, I try to find a way to do that. <laughs> so, you know, tag match, if I'm not directly involved at the time, I'm going to probably be doing something. It's just how I work. But, the trick to it was, is it was like when it was all said and done, 
you're kind of waiting to come down and you almost never do. Like, I had to work at 5 o'clock. Well, I had to get up at 5 o'clock this morning to go to work. I don't think I was able to close my eyes and sleep till about 1. And the whole time, you just kind of, you keep going over the match in your head. You keep going, okay, why did that work? Why was that okay? Oh, that's what so-and-so taught you. Oh, that's when you went to that seminar with the Rock and Roll Express. That's what he was talking about. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's... They it, did know what they were talking yeah, about. Yeah, you know, it's, Come and to it's find one of those out. things, Ricky you know, Morton. Go, go figure, you know. But it's just, it's one of those deals where it's like, because then you can't, it's weird, because then you can't wait to try to get other people, one, to be able to have that. But I think the other thing, too, is it's like, now I, I, I'm starting to more understand, like, why guys want to go work four or five matches in a weekend. Because sometimes I think when you guys were talking about that earlier with the burnout, there's times when if it doesn't go really well, like on a Saturday, and maybe you have a booking on Sunday, it's kind of a chore. You get up and you're like, oh, God, I got to put everything back together. I got to go to this show. I got to talk to this promoter who I don't like. Did I wash my gear when yeah. I got home last <laughs> night? So I have yeah. a clean, dry gear to wear yeah. the next day. Yeah. Public service announcement, guys, wash your gear. Like, just wash it. <laughs> the, the people in the front row will thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and understand that gear also means like knee pads, yep. elbow pads. Yep. It's cool you washed your trunks. That's awesome. But your knee pads are rough. Like, they catch a lot of sweat, bro. But, but I think that's – but it's a big thing because now you're kind of motivated. And, again, I, I just – I can only imagine how, like, guys who go out there, like I would say like a, like a Nick Cutler, guys like that who – are to a point now where they're kind of peaking, like they're as good as they've been in a really long time. What that's like every night, you know, oh, bam, I did it again. Oh, I pulled that off again. And it's one of those deals. It's got to, that's got to be cool, but I think that's part of what like kind of motivates the rest of us. Guys that are trying to get better, guys that are, like I told, I told Robles at AGW a couple weeks ago, I was like, I'm very happily average. <laughs> <laughs> And the nights that I'm below average, it it crushes me. Mm -hmm. Like if it doesn't go well, it'll bother me for weeks. I can't help it. It's how I work. But it's one of those things where like my family, people look at me and go, okay, it wasn't that bad. And to me, that's not working. (laughs) And so it's one of those. So you start, you know, you go back and you watch the tapes and you watch the match. You go, oh, I could have done this, 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 and this. Or I know better than to do that. Or God, why did I let that guy get the drop on me that way? You know, I mean, he only poked you in the eye twice. You know, you're not blind, you know, whatever. So it's, I don't know. I, maybe you guys can maybe articulate it better. Cause I, I think I'm still geeked up about it. it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so wrestling hide, I think is very true. I can remember, uh, in my graduation match, I was tagging with Chris against Dale Patrick's and Johnny knives. That was my graduation match. And, uh, I remember coming out. I remember, at one point, I had um, Johnny basically in a modified bow and arrow where I, I was pulling his arms back and I had a knee in his back. And I remember I went, Johnny, Johnny, I yelled really loud. And I remember the fans got quiet so they could hear me. And I go, it's like having a knife in your back. <laughs> <laughs> and the fans booed me so much. <laughs> and I remember in the back of my head, I'm like, I can't believe... I got them to shut up, and then boo me. And I was, I'm like, it, I, it, it wasn't. Be, it wasn't because you were a heel. It's because I was an absolute. It was, terrible an, joke. which <laughs> it worked both ways. But, but then hey, I also, that's what you're looking for, right? I also remember uh, coming out on my own one time at NGW. And it was like my second match. So they didn't really still understand who I was, and I still didn't really get. Hey, you got to work the crowd when you come out. Like you got to establish what you are. So I came out, and I didn't know what to do, and the fans did nothing for me <laughs> there wasn't cheering there wasn't booing there was silence which is the worst thing to hear uh and i'm like this is awful i don't ever want to experience this again <laughs> I, I had it a lot easier at ngw when they hated me for a year straight and um tagged up with jeremy hadley in a match once everyone's absolute favorite to hate jeremy hadley um he got pinned, he blamed me for the loss and started yelling at me about how he was going to move to England, buy a townhouse, and we were going to beat everybody up. <laughs> and he just wouldn't stop running his mouth, and he kept yelling at the kid in the front row. He was making fun of him wearing a Bella's T-shirt. And I punched him, laid him out from outside the ring. Next show came down, it was uh, Jeremy Hadley and Kenny Cage, I believe. Yeah. And you were going out there. Your tag partner had just retired, uh, the flying Italian. Thanks Vinnie for doing 
they uh, they said, hey, uh, you know, we found somebody in the back for you that hates Jeremy Hadley almost as much as these people. My music played. I walked out, and after a year straight of them booing me every chance I could get, they all lit up like crazy. And I was like, this is going to be easy. <laughs> I don't have to do anything but point at Jeremy Hadley, and I didn't even start yelling at him yet, and they, they loved me. And ever since then, it's just been, we've been tagging up down there. Yeah, wrestlers high, like, I've had more matches that I could nitpick nonstop because I you know we're all our own worst critics here and mm-hmm. uh, I mean I, I've had great matches with Johnny Motley and me and him had a match not that long ago that was not very good uh, neither one of us were happy with it um, sometimes things just don't click and then the next show we had I wrestled Santana Starks and things were a lot more it was probably because it was somebody I've never wrestled before never even been in the ring with before and even a tag match nothing and then since then I've been right back up again um I had a great match against uh, Kenji Brio when he came out from Alaska to wrestle me uh, at uh, Hebron Havoc. And then it might not have been the flashiest thing in the world, but I believe that Johnny Nye and I, Rockstar Johnny Nye and I, had a great match on Friday night. And, you know, not for nothing, I don't care. Yes, I can do a moonsault. I never hit one ever because everyone's too fast for me. But uh, the thing is, the crowd was still into it and that's mm-hmm. all I really cared about and I believe that we got everything we needed out of that match just for that very simple reason I've had matches where I just felt like it was terrible but I could still hear the people booing and cheering in the mm-hmm. right moments that we wanted it anyway so I think we still got it whether that's them being extremely nice or we still hooked them somehow some way that's that's it's great like I came home from that match Friday night and uh if it weren't for the fact that I had been up since 4 a.m. to work that morning, <laughs> I probably would have been up till at least 5 a.m. the next day because I was just excited. I was glad. It was great. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I passed out finally at 2.30 a.m. Thankfully, because yeah. he had to drive me. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, and I, and I drove this to the birthday party I yesterday. said, get me to my next book and drive <laughs> safely. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's the hardest thing for, like, us, too, sometimes, is remembering that, like, for the fans, it's not the same experience. So, like, maybe it's not, we don't feel like it's going well, oh, you know, this happened or that happened. But if they're having fun, then how bad can it be? Yeah. Well, like, mm-hmm. you know, Amy, Amy you, I know you've probably seen things, you've noticed things have gone off mm-hmm. and not gone the way they should have went into the ring, whether it's a botched move or whatever. But, I mean, it, it's kind of, is it is it quick to forget that absolutely. something didn't go absolutely. right as long because as something clearly, gets snapped back in? Yeah, absolutely, because clearly, clearly you guys know, and then... I've always said, like, whoever you're working, it's chemistry. It's like your dance partner, you know? You step on somebody's foot, oops, pick it up and just keep going with it. It's going to happen. And me, from my aspect and probably Ken's aspect, too, we catch that more than most people. But, again, it's it's like a dance. Like, oops, sorry, you know, and just yeah. you just keep going. And it's going to happen, That's you know? And you're only as good as who you're working, I think. That's I mean, well, and I think, uh, yeah. Well, well, I mean, there's a phrase in wrestling that uh, you can't make chicken out of there's, salad there's, out of yeah, chicken. Yeah, you got There's some other analogies, yeah, but yeah. yeah. But, but, I, mean, but I, I think, though, the cool thing, though, like with that is it's like, I feel like, like you guys as fans, you go there to have fun. Like, oh, absolutely. There's, because I, I, that's as much as I said about where we're at in a place in society where I think people are trying to be more accepting. I think. There's this small group of wrestling fans anywhere you go yeah. that are miserable to be around because they don't, they're not there to have fun. That's not their goal. Their goal is to put themselves above somebody at some point and they sit there the whole night just waiting for something to go bad or for a guy not to, maybe for not to be as good or maybe for a guy to come out and maybe look like he should probably cut a few pounds or be taller or shave his back more or whatever. They're the real life Twitter. Yeah, fans. and it's yeah. and it's and they can't wait for it. And then when it happens, they're so excited. And it's sad because it's like, but what are you doing for the other two hours? You gotta be bored. It's, a, it's kind of annoying because <laughs> yeah. you do when somebody will say something fairly personal, and I'm like, really, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah you went with that. Really, like, like you know, it, it is it is all for fun, and there are kids there and stuff. But you yeah. always have every once in a while that one like, and they'll say something. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, 
you were, you I, had to jump. You were trying to jump in a little jump bit ago. In when we were talking about botches. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that a subject so, near and dear to your heart? Or I've never had one. As all my matches have gone pitcher perfectly, where I win easily. I've heard that. Uh, I've heard that. Uh, no, so I can remember actually that was like always in the back of my head, and I think it made it hard for me to have fun in matches as I was always scared. I was going to screw the match up. I was going to forget the spot. I was going to be in the wrong spot. And because of that, I never interacted with the fans of my first few matches because I was so focused on, I need to be here. I need to be here. I need to be here. I need to remember this. And I can remember uh, a botch that ended up helping me a lot uh, psychology-wise was in a, I did a pre-match show in Fire Pro. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was in a tag match. Uh, and I remember the finish was supposed to be I get uh, Chris up for a TKO spot, so I get him on my shoulders. Ruff gets distracted by their manager. His partner comes in and attacks me. I was supposed to be that, and we get to the spot, and the ref won't get distracted. He's staring <laughs> straight. <laughs> straight oh. He is straight too good at, at his job. Oh. He, he's just staring dead <laughs> eye. And I have the guy on my shoulders ready to hit the move, and he's yelling, Turn around! At the Your ref. time to shine, bro! <laughs> and I'm, it's like my fourth or fifth match, and I'm like, no, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm looking around because I think I'm getting ribbed. I'm no, like, what yeah. am I supposed to do? <laughs> so it's one of those things where suddenly I have to think of my feet of how are we going to get out of this spot. So I'm like, uh, and I, I'm like, oh, I'll walk him by the ropes so he can hold onto the ropes so we can buy some time. So we get on the ropes and he's on the ropes holding onto it so I can't hit my move. And he keeps yelling, turn around, turn around. Ref won't turn around. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so I'm. I'm <laughs> I, I rip him off and I, I'm, I'm walking to the center of the ring and I'm like, I gotta get him down some way. And I'm like, well, they had worked all the heat on my leg. So I got him and I'm, I, I go to do my move, but my leg buckles and I drop him. And he's like, this is what you meant to do. Picks me up, hit the move, one, two, three on me. So we got That's to the awesome. finish. But I remember like I was so scared until that point because I'm like, I'm like I'll never be able to out to think over this stuff. Now like, a little thing will get bash where it's like I expect someone to take a bump one way and they just like mm. kind of go down and crumple, you know. And I'm like, whatever, and I just start stomping <laughs> on them. <laughs> so I mean, uh, it's and, it's and, it was one of those things I needed because I needed to know, hey, you could still have a match even when it doesn't go one, two, three the way you think it's going. I have, you know, I have some advice actually. Oh, okay. The wrestling wisdom that I that so I've uh, at the university I've been getting involved in. Um, Marshalling, so it's be like the being one of the ceremonial yeah. lead everybody down the aisle kinds of things. And next year, I'll be taken over. And one of the best lessons that we've kind of all picked up together along the way is that um, we're the only ones that know how the ceremony's supposed to go, yep. right? So in a case like that, where it's not, you know, it's it's not just an overt, obvious, whoops, he just dropped him, or whoops, he missed that thing he was supposed to do, um, you know. You're the only one that knows exactly what's supposed to be going on, and so in cases like that, it might actually, you know, be easier to kind of smooth your way, smooth yeah, your so way through it. We had our tag match, oh, yeah. our title match, uh, when we dropped the belts, had the finish. It got did, botched. It got botched it, horribly, it, and yeah. so there's four, kind of five of us that well, suddenly it, have to come up with a new plan of how are we going to get the one, two, three to happen now? There's the two, there's uh, the four of us wrestlers, there's the, the manager, and then there's the ref. So there's six people involved in that. The manager uh, got sick, felt nauseous, felt like they were going to throw up, and couldn't hit their spot that they were supposed to hit. And uh, we had to improvise uh, very quickly. And if it wasn't for uh, TK, myself, and the... <laughs> Luis Rojas, uh, going for what we needed to go for, we would not have got the finish that we needed out of it because there's just too much going on at once. And that's why I'm not a big fan of planning every mm -hmm. little thing down for the matches. If it's something like, you know, we need to tell a story where we're leading into something down the road and it needs to hit at the certain cue, it needs to be at the certain point, that is the only time I'm a fan of it. And I make sure we go over something like that five, six mm -hmm. times, even with the refs so they know what they're doing. Refs that have been doing it long enough, um, they know the cues, whether they know what's happening or not, to stay with somebody. 
yes, we're peeling back the onion here. Everybody already knows we're talking about this as a, as a, as mm-hmm. a more of a, like a, uh, I wouldn't say intellectual discussion, but a discussion nonetheless. It's just, it's just the way people that have been in for a little bit and have enough experience refing, they're easy to be like, hey, blah, 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 you yell and they pull away. You can get done what you need to get done on a, on a, on a whim if it needs to be. But yeah, I, I don't like planning every little thing. Mm-hmm. I can't. I would like to tell you that whole tag match scenario they just discussed. Drex explained that a whole lot calmer than the first time I heard it. You <laughs> <laughs> should have walked in the back with them. I, as soon as, so as, everyone, soon as we roll out of the ring, we're hanging we out uh, in front of the in front of our entrance, and I'm on the ground, and I'm like, "Well, that got up." Uh, <laughs> yeah. And and I believe I looked at you and said, "Yeah, but it doesn't matter. The fans, the fans." Yeah. I walk through the curtain, still yeah. stone faced, angry, which I don't get very much. Uh, other than backstage at ACW, uh, and that's just because I'm, I got a million things I'm doing there. But walk through the curtain, and I was angry at first. I didn't know exactly what happened until I spoke to the manager and the other tag team and found out what happened. And after that, I was fine. But yes, it was frustrating because it didn't go the way it should have went, and it was too much to plan, in my opinion. But it worked. The fans came up to me and told me the only reason why they won is they cheated. They hit TK with brass Perfect. knuckles. And it was like, all right, kids are sold on it. That's all I yeah. care about. <clears throat> but yeah, it was. we were behind a couple of beverages at that point. And he, the way that it started was, now let me tell you what happened here. Water, <laughs> water beverages. Yeah, of course. Got to stay hydrated. I was but, drinking beer. I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, a couple of weeks ago in Bourbon, we had a match that didn't go particularly well. Yeah. And for a... It was nice to say that it wasn't our fault this time. <laughs> and as I come through the locker room door, um, Mitchell Taylor was there, and he just he busted out laughing because I walked in the door and just go, that didn't go well. <laughs> and then I just sat down there like, but you said it with the biggest smile on your face. <laughs> you were so friendly about it. I was like, what are you going to do? I mean, it happened. I mean, it wasn't, nobody died. Nobody <laughs> broke their leg. It's fine. Well, yeah, and I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't angry at anybody involved in the match. It was just the circumstances how sure. things go, you know. Mm-hmm. Amy, to go back to the, you know, kind of the wrestling high sort of question, as a fan in the front row, what are the components of a show that will leave you totally jazzed when that thing is done and you're on the way home and you're just replaying stuff in your head? That happens to me sometimes. It does, and the wrestling high for, well, for me, you know, the, the other day I was like, one more sleep and I wake up. Like, this, it's so exciting. Like, I'm watching the clock at work. I'm like, as soon as 5 o'clock, I'm so out of here. Like, you know, the, it's, it's, as a fan, like, it's, it's, it's real for me, too. Um, When TK comes out, thank God. <laughs> Obviously, that's the thing. <laughs> thank God, the show is saved. Yeah, you always you always have the the matches that you anticipate, and then like there's always things that surprise you. And I I really think that it's a lot of the storylines, mm-hmm. like that. Uh... Well, and that's what that's what happened with your match this weekend. Is, is it was the it was a payoff to a very well laid out, you know, long sequence of stories building yeah. to that patiently. And it goes and, back to a year ago, this past Winter Warfare, actually, mm-hmm. when Austin Fury had won the uh, ECW belt. That's where the story actually started at mm-hmm. that point for everything that led up to last yeah. Friday. And it was very, it was very clear to the crowd what the stakes were, and there was enough going on in the match that. You could legitimately say, I don't know which way this is going to go. Yep. You know, sometimes as as an audience member, I can, you know, I, uh, yeah, I think I know how this is going to play out. And in a lot of times it does. But this one, I I could see it going either way. And you guys, mm-hmm. you guys kind of had me guessing the whole time to the end, which was great. I do have to say my very favorite, um, GPW, their storylines are, like, epic. And they constantly are uh, throwing stuff at you that you don't expect. And they keep you on the edge of your seat, and it's exciting, and I, it's it's awesome. And wrestling around here is kind of like working for the government or the military. There's so many acronyms you have right. to know. Yeah. So GPW is global, global and that's and they're based in Chicago uh, or one of the suburbs of John Rec Center in Midlothian. Midlothian. Okay. And we've also mentioned ARW, which is uh, Adrenaline Ringside Wrestling in Lake Station, ACW, Acme Championship Wrestling, DeMott, and other Porter County-ish 
types of areas. NGW, New Generation Wrestling, PWK, Pro Wrestling King. SCW, Southland Championship. Mm -hmm. Um, Ultimately, SCW, GPW, and CSW are like sister companies. And I do have to say as a fan as well, it is fun to see everybody's different gimmicks at the different companies. Like some are face, some are heel. Mm -hmm. Like um, uh, when uh, members of the family or members of different clicks, whatever like that, the heel and face and stuff is always Mm -hmm. fun to to get the crowd going and like, oh, he's faced at this company, but he's a really good heel here. And I mean, that's another, that is a gift in itself, I think. Do you guys do you guys need it like that? I mean, would it be too uh, oppressive? Is probably the wrong word, but just if it's the same aspect of you every single time, no matter where you are, would that get draining? Do you need to have have things from from both directions? I feel like, and this is just for me. I feel like with my gimmick, it's the same gimmick regardless where I'm at, and even if I'm face or heel, I will work in a little different style. Like I obviously uh, have changes to it to make it work. I'm not coming out telling kids they're dumb right off the bat. <laughs> not right off the bat. But, it, Gotta let it simmer a but at the same time, when I come out, they're automatically cheering me, so why would I come out and start yelling at them? Uh, what if I come out in here and they're automatically booing me? Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm going to come out and be frustrated off the bat with them because they're dumb. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, I tell him, I'm like, when we, we work down in NGW, you know, we're working a very strong style in the yeah. sense of like hey we're gonna hit a big move and a lot of the guys we work are smaller than us so like you know how how are we not kind of the bad guys in some of our matches even when we're the good guys because like hey like if we get a rune it's like you know he's like a buck 40 mm-hmm. like i'm going to pick him up and slam him and they're well, like ooh I mean- a rune and i'm like <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> all right <laughs> uh yeah i mean <clears throat> i've worked uh you know, down there, it's a, obviously a lot different for both of us. Is it's we kind of do the same kind of thing, but I think down there, the two of us are a little bit more we're dumber. joking. Yeah, we're very joking down yeah, there. Yeah, we, we joke. We joke a lot down there, even in the middle of the matches and our infamous breaking math promo. Not breaking math, Scott Steiner breaking math, but because he didn't break it, he actually followed everything math wise. I mean, we, we did a promo, and ever since then, like, people laugh about it. We cut, we'll joke about it in the middle of the ring sometimes. We like to mess with the Bambinos when we wrestle them mm-hmm. down there. Um, <laughs> yelling at them like the Fonz. Hey. <laughs> They're and, fun uh, to watch. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't take too kindly to that. But, uh, <laughs> but I feel like if you watched a match from down there and then a match from, you've seen us, yeah. obviously, mm-hmm. you still go, hey, There's a lot they of have a broken character in the sense of, like, hey, I understand why they act one way here and one way there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same t- it's the same person. I understand why these fans like them and these fans hate them. We're not doing it. We're like, suddenly I come out and I'm throwing like pizza into the crowd and they're like, oh, that's why they like them. Why doesn't he do them up north? Maybe they'd like them more. It's the same guy. A lot of that comes down to, to the stories and the booking that's gone on for, since we've been down there too. I mean, if you have the right stuff going on, it's easy. It makes it easier on everybody trying to get somebody over as a face that's not exactly a face or as a natural heel can be very difficult unless you're Dave Allen he was a natural heel and everybody still loves him down at NGW <laughs> they love him up here too I uh, think that and I think just except for that kid that was lit that lit into him on his way back through the curtain the other night did you see that <laughs> This little kid they, is wailing well, on, on his... ACW, awesome. they don't like him. I think it's the ACW <laughs> kids that don't like too, too many of us. Because they're dumb. They're very dumb. <laughs> I don't know. But I've I, been trying to tell you how dumb they are. <laughs> but I think the one thing, like you're saying, though, too, is I think when... If you can get, like, guys and girls in the ring with each other who are willing to work with each other to make that work, it's so much better. Yeah. Because in different places, it's better or worse than other places. But sometimes you'll have a person in the ring with you who they start talking to you and everything about that is, okay, well, how can they get themselves over? Yeah. What can they get done? Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, that's cool. Let's do that. But what do you want to do here? Let's, do you think it'll work? Because it's like anything else. Like if, if, you, if you don't have a Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker doesn't work. If you don't have a Lex Luthor, Superman doesn't work. If you don't have a Joker, Batman doesn't work. Not as well, you know. So, I mean, if Batman's just beating up two-bit thugs all the time, Batman is never the big hero anymore. And people seem to have a really hard time with that sometimes. 
and you might, and it's, I say young guys all the time because I come off like this old crotchety guy, but it's yeah, not always just young guys, no. but it's, they have, they do it a lot, <laughs> but it's, well, I do this and this and I'm going to do this backflip deal and then I'm going to do this thing and then, okay, okay, but um, you're 112 pounds. So then what are we going to do? Well, my finish is a spear and I'm going to tackle you? Well, okay, but... I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> like, is what, TK throwing them into you for a spear right, like right? you did with Cliff Caviar right. once? You know, it and it's, it's that effective. kind of a deal. But that's see, that's creative. That's, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about where, like, working with what you have. And then I think, like you're saying, being, you know, a heel one place, being a baby another place, whatever, that's cool too. But I think sometimes guys are so quick to try to pull that trigger instead of taking whatever they're doing and just try other stuff. Like, if, if you're a baby and this, this, and this always works, but then you go to Midlothian and you've always been in Springfield, well, try something. See if that doesn't work with them. And if it doesn't work the first time, try it somewhere else and see, mm -hmm. because the crowds are gonna be kind of different. So, yeah, maybe NGW doesn't like the spine buster, okay? They don't get into it. Oh, they but love you, the spine Yeah, they love it, <laughs> you know? But, you know, but maybe you go this other place and they lose their mind because they're all Ron Simmons fans deep down and they're just like, nice, you know? But whatever, just those kind of things. And I think there's so much guys get into this and girls too get into this mindset of pulling this trigger where it didn't work one time, I got to change it. And it's like, well, maybe you had an off night. Maybe that was that crowd. Maybe they were tired. Maybe your main event went on at 11.30 at night. And, and there's been 14 matches before that. If, if you listen to any podcasts at all, like I listen to a lot of wrestling, but I also listen to a lot of stand-up comedy podcasts as well, comedians will tell you that they'll have to just change the joke 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 200 times before they finally get the right beat, mm -hmm. the right punchline, the right setup, before it finally works. And then it becomes a part of their hour, and then like guys like Bill Burr will go and do a, a, a special and then as soon as they record that special, they throw away that hour and they start from scratch again. And it's that's what it's yeah. wrestling. You've got to keep trying stuff and see what works for you. I recently read that book that Mike Quackenbush just put out again, yeah. that seven, uh, seven aspects of a performer, whatever. And he talks at length about, like, if you have a, a series of moves or an entrance routine or something, he said try it three times in front of three different crowds. Yeah. If it doesn't work any of those three times, then it's probably trash. Yeah. But if it starts, if, it, if you do it exactly how you meant to and crowd A doesn't like it, but crowd B is really into it and crowd C is kind of, eh, keep it. Because like, mm -hmm. maybe it'll get, they'll catch on as they go. But you, it's like we said earlier, you got to teach them. Yep. They got to understand it. If they already like Drex, if they already are into what he does and he's never done like a gorilla press into a Samoan, well, well, that, okay. But then maybe it didn't go well the first time or the guy didn't catch it right or whatever. But then he hits it really pretty one night, like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, or, you know, TK comes out and just calls kids dumb. <laughs> and, like, and maybe the crowd doesn't. Every time. Yeah. And maybe all their parents go, yeah, my kids are dumb. We work for you. <laughs> you know, and that doesn't work. But then the next night, they all want to start a riot and have a PTA meeting about it. Then, yeah, we got something. But I don't know. It's. It's there's so many like little things where I think guys are so hard on themselves and never get something a chance to build. And my favorite thing you guys said a minute ago, and I wish you could record it and play it everywhere I've ever worked. Long drawn out storylines will work if you do them right. Yeah. A big lead and a big kind of slow burn can get a really good payoff if you do it right. Mm -hmm. The example I always give now is like 90% of the indie shows you end up having partner A turns on partner B at 7 o'clock. At 7.07, .07, partner B challenges partner A to a street fight in whatever town they're in. At 9.30, partner B pins partner A. By the next show, nobody remembers what happened. And they totally forgot what happened. No explanation, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Which is but, bad if you have the same fans showing up yeah. to those shows. Yeah. But if you could just, just draw it out a little bit, like maybe partner A turns on partner B there, don't even talk about it. Next show, this is why I did it. I don't like you. You're ugly. Your kids are dumb. <laughs> I'm staying. I'm keeping Look, it. Kids like, are dumb. There's, there's a theme <laughs> going on right now. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. Your kids are dumb. Like, you know, and then by like show four or five, then, hey, we need to settle this out. We got to do something. 
you know, so. But I, they get, I think people get so, like, excited and so worried about, oh, they're not going to remember, or, oh, da, da, da. So then they want to do it all at one night, and, like, I think the fans get hurt more than anybody because you guys don't have anything to anticipate at that point. There's nothing to get mm -hmm. into. And, like, basic things that we learn is, like, what does your baby got to have? He's got to have sympathy. <laughs> He's got to have intensity. Yeah. And if I only beat him up once, he don't care. He's not, it's not that bad. But if I beat him up every time I see him, <laughs> you know, and it gets progressively worse to the point where, like, you know, they don't know if he's going to make it. Then he finally comes back to this super thing, and then, you know, TK comes out and beats up the whole roster. Then... I now love we got this something. booking. Love <laughs> <laughs> Where can we this start? This guy gets it. This guy gets it. <laughs> so I know what to do. But as a fan, too, there's some, and it, you know, that get beat to death, but there's some storylines just like, oh, my God, already. You know, it, it's, it, so, mm -hmm. but that's another thing. Um, I don't want to keep going on, but GPW, same thing. You, you leave the show like, I cannot wait until the next show. Because right away, you know, the, we have a new GM now, and he'll be like, oh, next month this and this is going to happen. And you're like, I can't wait. I already can't wait. And I'm watching the rest mm -hmm. of the show. And you walk out of there, and uh, they promote the show for the rest of the month to where you literally can't wait for the next show. Yeah. You know, and I, I really think it, it's a gift, you know. And then there's some shows, the match will start, and you're like, oh, what's this about? Like, what, mm -hmm. what's going on with this? Like, that's, you know. But I, I really do think, like you're saying, the storyline is huge. Keep the, keep the fans engaged. Keep them, you know. Yeah. Speaking of next shows, because we're down to our last 15 minutes here, so I want, so I want to make sure that we have... Well, I don't know if we're going to get there. See, that's, that's my long-term booking, is I talk about a game, but I never play it. You have to come back again. It's starting to turn into the Raven podcast, where he just can never pays off anything that's going on. <laughs> we'll, talk some, we'll talk some business for a few minutes here. Uh, okay. Amy, you are coordinating uh, an event that's part of the Live in the Ville weekend festival. Uh, well, in Hessville, can just talk about that a little bit. Yes, it is going to be in Hessville. It's outdoors. Uh, we're actually going to do. Um, last year was just one. Uh, this year is two. It is going to be Friday, June first, and Saturday, June second. Sounding like both of them are going to start about six thirty. Um, we have Maxi Molly. We have our champion Max Holiday. Drex is going to be there mm -hmm. with us. This is ARW. ARW, correct. Sorry. Yeah. So it'll be our ARW um, live in the Ville. Awesome. They have food trucks, they're going to have derby girls, they're going to have a lighted motorcycle parade, and ARW is going to be there both nights. Right, so this is a this is a big community festival that spans the, most for, of the weekend, and then the wrestling is just one of many, many, many different oh, components of this. there's a lot of things that they're going to have going on. But yeah, it's, it'll be about 6.30, and I do think, um, last year we were down towards the end of Kennedy, and I do think they're setting us up in a much better spot. Now we're going to be towards the middle, like in mm -hmm. the midst of everything, so... I'm really excited. You had me at Derby Girls. Right? <laughs> me too. You had me at Food Truck. <laughs> yeah, Food Trucks and Derby Girls, I'm all about. But there's yeah. going to be a lot of dumb kids walking around, so I, I have mean, to put up with that. Yeah, I can slap the food out of their hands and call them dumb. <laughs> slap the walking taco, grab it, eat it. It's walking away, buddy. <laughs> and this is just part of the part of the overall festival, so there's no extra there's no extra admission charge or anything oh, no. like that. It's just Nope, they just block just up walk up. Yep. Like, a, like a big block party. Yeah. There's something fun. I was I was there last year baking in the sun with 120 degrees on the oh, asphalt. Yeah. He's but like, can you pick a even, different damper? Yeah. <laughs> even We're trying towards the beginning of the month this time, but even with the temperature though, there's there's something oddly awesome about sitting on a lawn chair in the middle of Kennedy Avenue it was watching fun. wrestling. I was so I was so excited. And to be at the very end of Kennedy, but to Charlie Jr. Get him go. I mean, he. Everybody's looking like, where the hell's that coming from? Sorry. <laughs> and then, like, I'm watching people come down, and it, it was it was exciting. Mm -hmm. It was really exciting. And then, you know, the guys hitting the mat and everything, and and it was it was awesome. Good. Even as as hot as it was. Yeah. <laughs> and that's June first and second. Correct. Okay. Friday and Saturday. Say something about your Facebook venture that you have going on. Oh man. <laughs> I have started a Facebook page called That's What She Said. <laughs> and <laughs> it is a bit of... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are we not and I actually went again? live Thursday. <laughs> What's that? 
it or we not do it? Ignore us, <laughs> ignore us over here. Right? Yes. It's, boys, it's, boys. It's for that response. It's for that response, <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's, it's just kind of uh, from a fan's perspective. Um, and it, it's a, something it, a lot of people talk me into. I'm giving it a shot to mm -hmm. see what happens. Just from like fan and even a female fan's perspective. So it's fun. Which I, I mean, I think, and that's that's the the neat thing about it is that, uh, I mean, in the crowds, I I've never done a gender study, you know, of the breakdown in I the get crowd, so but much crap. I do. Time. I get so much mm -hmm. that I'm a legitimate fan. The reason why I'm a fan is because I started watching really super young with my dad. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I have two younger brothers. I was the one sitting on the crate working on the cars with my dad. I watched the Stooges with him. I watched wrestling. I got hooked on. Mean Gene in the car lots and, mm -hmm. and Harry Von Eric and all that stuff. I was the one sitting with my dad watching that stuff. I go with my daughter now. My son wants to start training. This is something um, that kept my family together. We went to a Survivor Series when we were kids. And me and my little brother sat on the floor with glitter and markers and made big posters. And my dad was, like, stoked to take us. And, I mean, that's how it started. Demolition's one of my favorite, mm -hmm. you know. And... To meet them at ARW, that was pretty cool yeah. to, <laughs> to experience that. But and, and to see how you guys interact with the kids, because my kids are older now. But And to see the kids and how passionate they are and stuff. And I was like, I remember that. And I remember my kids being little like that. And it's, it's just, it's a good outlet. And it's, as parents, you know, we can spend time with our kids and stuff too. So. Now, were, were you a dumb kid or were you a smart kid? I am a smart kid. There. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably NGW dumber fans. now than I was when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, how about let's let's play this game for five minutes, and then okay. I'll let you guys plug whatever it is you need to plug. Because I had it written up, and I've if it's just one of those things, it bugs me now. So if I play it, I can delete the file, and it's not on my screen anymore, and that'll make me very very happy. Mm -hmm. So the name of the game is Metal or Indie, and I've cobbled together uh, people's names or oh, no. and you have to it, most of you guys are going to know these anyway but we'll do it anyway uh you have to identify whether it's uh an indie wrestler or the name of a metal band or of a heavy metal person like if i were to say necro butcher you would say oh, indie, indie, indie. Wrestler, yeah. but if i was to say king diamond Metal then, then you would say metal. Should I be indie wrestler? <laughs> That's a great indie name. Okay. <laughs> Quick, delete so this part. I need to go register a trademark. Now, if I say Switchblade Conspiracy, this is the real part of the game now. Oh, no. That's, that's, that's metal. Indie. That's metal. Oh, we have I, don't know. I don't know. There I know Switchblade. Was, I know Switchblade. We know Switchblade over in New Japan, but I, I've never but no, heard that, Was that not the one that, like, Ambrose and uh, Callahan did? Was that CZW? Yeah, yeah never watched it. See, now I, <laughs> I, I prepared a little bit belly. Some of these I actually have parenthetical notes about, like, what organization they're in. That one, uh, that one I didn't. Uh, Silent Force. Oh, my God. These are all amazing. I'm going to say metal. Yeah, I'm going to go with metal, too. Dave, have, you, have, you been, have you been listening to the Raven right, podcast? Because this is very similar to no. some of the games they do. No, okay. Metal. I'll do metal. I'm all in. The wrestlers are in metal. Yep. The, the Silent Force is a metal band. Right. Uh, Bobby Blitz. I'm going to say metal. That's Indy. That's <laughs> he's, he's the lead singer of Overkill. <laughs> How do I not know him? Oh, man. Okay. This one might be a little easier. Blaze Bailey. I'm afraid to answer. I'm like, That's a metal guy. Yeah, he's a metal guy. He's a replacement singer in Iron Maiden for a See, while. See, I would have said Indy. <laughs> I know, we're all boxing here. here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this was fun because a lot of these names, can, if you're not, if you're not familiar, they, they can go either way. Hollow Wicked. That's a wrestler. That's a wrestler. Yeah, that's that's Chikara. You know how many gimmicks I have right now? I'll just I'll just <laughs> right. Like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm using that. I've got it. The headbangers. That's a wrestler. Yeah, it's a it, metal but, wrestler. Oh, I had, but I had to put that in there. Trick question. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Danny Filth. Oh no. Metal. 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 Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, Death Piggy. That's Goodness, I hope I'm it's sad metal. that that's not an indie wrestler. <laughs> that's a, I would pay to see that thingy. He's in Guar. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say, please don't be a wrestler. <laughs> uh, Beastia 666. That's a wrestler. That's a wrestler. Yeah. That's yeah. Wrestler, yeah. So you guys are getting good at this now. Youth Suicide. Metal. No, that's the, they are apparently a tag team in Extreme Pro. Oh, yeah, um, I doubt it. Yeah, I would never have guessed that in a million years. I don't. No, I didn't guess that. Um, Necro Goblicon. 
Oh, that is absolutely metal, and yeah. probably one of my favorite gimmick metal <laughs> bands ever. Okay, that they were at the top of the list. Yeah, by there the go. way, there we go. How are we doing here? Okay, uh, a couple more. It's a gimmick now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until you watch some of the videos. I don't know how many gimmicks Wait you created until you watch tonight. some of the videos, Chuck. You'll love them. I'm five foot five. I can make that one work. Uh, speaking of five foot five, sex machine guns. That, that's wrestling. Metal. That's a metal band. Oh, that's a great tag on. team. <laughs> it's like the Motor City Machine hey, Guns. That is we, a great we're tag getting new shirts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Papa would change our tag team name. <laughs> Ronin. That's wrestling. That's from uh, uh, Dragon Gate. And can, do you know one or the... I mean, I think they had Ambrose several, but... Ambrose one of the members. Yeah. yeah. So was Tozawa. Oh, yeah. And Rich Swan and Jarny Gargano, I think, at some oh, point. yes. Yeah. Mike Tirano. Yeah, he's See, metal, you know. and that's that's just like a, a normal guy name, but it sounds like it could go either way. That would be a that would be a good rigging too. TK zero. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> metal. <laughs> See. Austin Theory. Austin oh, Theory awesome, is... awesome wrestler. Yeah, okay. Awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, Don Dockin. Uh, that's metal. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saving. I was uh, that one. I was trying to avoid, but I'm I'm running out here. <laughs> Baby Huey. Wrestler. No. I'm gonna metal. say metal. metal. <laughs> it's great for either one. It wrestler. That is uh yeah. that is Bull Dempsey before he was Bull Dempsey. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Good for right? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get roasted for not knowing how to <laughs> We got we got the squash on that. <laughs> All right. Well thank you for playing. That was that was exciting. I can't believe I missed Blitz. My my cousins brought over overkill and nuclear assault and Sacred Reich and all that stuff. I'm mostly we to our all the bands I used to have on cassette. Yeah. yeah um, right. <laughs> when she said Testament, I was like, oh. <laughs> all right, what do you guys have coming up next? Uh, we've got NGW on Saturday. Uh, Class Dismissed is the name of the show down at the, it's at the Armory again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope. As far as ACW goes, we do our usual summer hiatus. I do know that we have something in August of an outdoor show of some variety in a new town, but I don't know exactly all the mm-hmm. details yet. Backbreaker's um, got a show coming Backbreaker up. Backbreaker has got a show coming up uh, June 16th. June 16th. It's part of the uh, family, the Fam Fest at uh, is it Crossroads Corner, Community uh, Cornerstone Church? Community Church. Yeah. In Hobart. In Hobart, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that going on. Uh, I think the only match that they've announced so far is... Uh, Curtis Joseph versus uh, Trog the Trog. King, man. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's always always worth going to watch that gentleman. Whatever. See, we've just <laughs> spent almost two hours talking about how wrestling isn't ridiculous, and we're going to go see Trog the Caveman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally metal. Hey. And it's okay. People it's okay. Buy it they love it. It's exactly. Great. Uh, but yeah, as far, as far as that goes, it's just ARW for myself and that, and I don't know if... Uh, yeah, I don't even know the date for, uh, for July for... Uh, a, uh, NGW. NGW. Yeah. It'll probably be like the fourth Saturday. It's usually so. the uh, fourth Saturday every month. So, Okay. What about you? Oh, gosh. I'm bad at this. That's why I've been messaging. Uh, with PWK, K- it's, it's like every weekend now. Oh, just take, like just pick a weekend and um, you're on. I know there's there's a graduation party thing, but that's not even public, so that one doesn't matter. Yeah, shh. Um, yeah, right? <laughs> there, we're I know not going to talk about it anymore. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I think it's Extreme Sports, whatever, is doing that show in Plymouth the next Saturday. Battle for Plymouth. Mm-hmm. That's good, But that should be a really good show for people to go to. I mean, there's a lot of really good guys on that one. I know Nick Cutler's going to be there. Jake Ullman will be there. Russ Jones will be there. Scotty Young will be there. Um, Fireball. God, there's a lot of guys over there. I'm not going to be there because, you know, but I help other people out. <laughs> um, and then in June, I know Father's Day weekend is the next Pro Wrestling King Renegade Show, which is in South Bend at the Beacon Community Center. Um, and then June 30th is a really busy one in the South Bend area. Heartland Championship Wrestling is running a show at the Century Center. Mm-hmm. That's a brand new company. Um, Pro Wrestling King is running a show in Niles at Fisher's Barbecue. It's like Hot and Spicy 3. But it's also a pack anniversary, so that's going to be a good time. <laughs> so that means the whole Rat Pack will be there probably doing something ridiculous. And then um, that's about it for coming up. I okay. Think, I think. So you'll be a busy man. Hopefully. 
I, that was my last two months. I'm finally slowing down a little bit right now. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the the last couple of months were crazy. There were so many weekends with multiple multiple shows, and now with uh, with ACW kind of putting it neutral for a while, and FWF just had their was it Spring in the Ring, and that was kind of their closeout show for their season. Um, so it's good, you know, with Backbreaker dropping in every once in a while now, and Heartland coming up, that'll be that'll be helpful to sort of keep the activity level up here instead of down here, and that's that's pretty nice. So I think we uh, I think we did it. We we killed a couple of hours. That was exciting. I can kill some more hours. <laughs> I, keep going. I did mean to say one thing. I am so sorry. That's uh, okay. There, there are several shows in Indiana in the next couple of weeks that are going to be benefits for Adam Bueller. Yes. Who yes. is a, who's a friend of all of ours. Yes. He is. And um and a lot of different places. There was already one or two shows in the South Bend area that we're able to get a little bit of money for him. Um, there's a huge one. I think it's is it Evansville. Jeffersonville. Jeffersonville. Yeah. That that one should be huge. Um, I know at least two other guys are talking about running things in July. There's another company speaking about running in August, and all the proceeds will go to either to Adam or some kind of cancer research. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you for bringing that up. Adam has actually has been in the studio, so if uh, if there's anybody out here who's who's listened to multiple versions of the show, they may have actually heard him. But he's been a a, a workhorse uh, in this region for for a long time and it's really sad to hear what's what he's going through right now so it's amazing the way that people are pulling together around that so i'm very glad you brought that up um too bad we have to end on that note now no he'll, he'll be fine he'll yeah. he's gonna get through he's a fighter if he's, anybody yeah. have, i've ever met in this business is a fighter that's that guy so i've been following him on facebook and her and uh, kaylee and i were actually talking about that on the way here and uh following his Facebook and he's so strong. It's amazing. He's such a trooper and yeah, to, to see it, you guys are presence outside of the ring as well as in the ring and I wish him nothing but the best. But yeah, he's he's a beast in and out of the ring and I'm, I'm sure he's got this, but he's got a hell of a support system. and He's got a lot of great friends. Yeah, it's definitely. not often you get to be scared for cancer, but I'm super scared for cancer. That's a good way to put it, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for taking this large amount of time out of your evening. And you've all uh, been repeated visitors. I, I believe I crowned you guys the tag team champions of yeah, WVLP think, because think, you have uh, more appearances here than anybody else. Three appearances each at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Twice together. <laughs> so it's, And they were the best shows. It, they absolutely. And I just want to say, I mean, I started this... I started this thing about a year and a half ago, and I had no idea how it was going to go. And, and you guys are, and folks like you are making it so incredibly easy. And it's nice that you're helping me kind of take it seriously. And that's, oh, it's just that guy again. <laughs> so I do, I really appreciate that. We appreciate you coming out to the shows because it's just, all it's doing is helping us branch a little bit in any way, shape, or form out. Every community around here, every wrestling company that's in the area, we rely on each other to not be a bad spot on the sport mm -hmm. the the entertainment of the side of it you get one bad company does one really bad thing it ruins it for everybody else so all of us like to plus we're most of us are very friendly with each other anyway yeah. so we like to help each other out excellent all right well thank you very much i hope you had a good time safe travels home and best of luck with the shows you got coming up best of luck with live in the ville and your your facebook adventures thank you